word, which is the truth and the way and the life to eternal life. Amen. I pray those who are with us here in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If I could, stand, if I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 114. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? O mountains, that you skipped like rams? O little hills like lambs? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of waters, and all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? Excellent. I can't hear you. A little bit higher? That's the way. Brilliant. We thank the Lord for another Friday, blessed Friday evening, all the way from Sydney, Australia. And it is just past 6 p.m. Sydney local time. Before we start our session or Bible preach this evening, I'm going to ask our daughter in Christ, Jacqueline, to begin this evening with a church hymn. Jacqueline. Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray come Jesus come let today be the day sometimes I feel like I'm gonna break but I
And we'll stand face to face Come and lay it all down Cause it might be today The time is right now of grace. to that. Well, so how are we? That's the way. We are continuing, and I believe today is the um, last um, sort of part in our little journey um, in the gospel according to St. Matthew in chapter 5. Uh, so we'll be um, finishing um, this little mini-series of uh, talks or lectures on chapter 5, which was from verses 1 to 16 inclusive. Uh, today we'll be, taking, uh, we'll be reading from Matthew 5, verses 13 to 16. Matthew 5, verses 13 to 16, and the Holy Bible says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Well, um, in the last four weeks, and this is, I believe, the fifth week in this um, talk, Matthew 5, verses 1 to 16. It took five weeks to cover these 16 verses. So you could just imagine how long would it take to cover the entire Holy Bible. I'll give you an idea. The book of Genesis, which is the very beginning of the Holy Bible, the Old Testament, consists of 50 chapters. 50 chapters. If we were to have a commentary on the book of Genesis alone, once a week for an hour and a half, and if it's the bishop, two hours minimum, it will take us nine years to finish Genesis. Nine years. So if you'd like, we can start, and I will see you in nine years' time. I hope I'm not crawling <laughs> or sitting in a wheelchair. Um, yeah, that's the Holy Bible. This is the Word of God. God is infinite. His Word is infinite. There is no end to the meaning behind those words you read. Okay. So today we are in the last sort of phase of these 16 verses. Last time we spoke, uh, it was about, um, 
We've covered uh, verses um, 10 to, uh, to 12, I believe. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And then blessed are you when you are reviled and everything nasty said against you for my name's sake. Re be rejo rejoice and be glad, exceedingly glad, for your reward is great in heaven. So if you're persecuted for righteousness' sake, the kingdom of heaven is yours. But if you are persecuted for the sake of Christ, then heaven is yours. And heaven, we said, is God himself. So when people go against you in the name of Jesus Christ, don't ever be angry. Don't ever be upset. Don't ever be offended when you show them love of Christ and they give it back to you in absolute opposite to it. Don't retaliate for Christ is your reward in the end. Pray for them, bless them and walk away. Come back next time and give them a hard time. So we spoke about that. But today, today we want to speak about you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. These are the verses for today's session. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Now, verses 1 to 16 of Matthew 5 is the plan of Christ for the kingdom of heaven. This is the plan of Christ for the kingdom of heaven. We said previously that there are nine beatitudes, nine beatitudes. The first three of them, they are called the foundational beatitudes. The first three are the foundational beatitudes and they are blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn and blessed are the meek. These three are referred to as the foundational beatitudes. The next three are called the leadership beatitudes. And the leadership beatitudes are blessed uh, are those who are or who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. These three are referred to as the leadership beatitudes. And there is one that falls between two circles and that one is part of the last three beatitudes they are nine so we can divide them into four categories the first three are foundational beatitudes the next three are the leadership beatitudes and there is one which is verse nine it is called the objective or the goal this is the objective beatitude, and that is, blessed are the peacemakers. The peacemakers is the objective and the goal of all of it. And this, blessed are the peacemakers, falls between the two circles, and those two circles are the last two beatitudes. One circle is referred to as the Christian circle. And the other one, the world circle. Now the Christian circle is verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is the Christian circle. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. We said righteousness is everything that is of good deed therefore who is righteousness Christ is our righteousness for Christ is the good God in him through him by him and with him we are able to do good deeds for he is the only good God when you hold on to the good God the good God by grace will give you the ability to do good deeds deeds so righteousness is not only deeds but it is more so Christ himself is our righteousness now why is blessed are the persecuted for righteousness sake 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Why is this the Christian circle? Because Christians persecute one another. Why? Because there are Christians who are fruitful and there are Christians who are fruitless. Those who are fruitless, look at the ones who are fruitful, become jealous and envy. What happens? The Christians who are fruitless attack and persecute the Christians who are fruitful. This is the Christian circle. Blessed are you when you are persecuted by your own Christian family, for the kingdom of heaven is yours. The kingdom of heaven is yours. I want to talk to you more than preaching. A fruitful tree, you will always see people casting stones at it. But an empty tree, you don't see people casting stones at that empty tree. But you see, that fruitful tree, when it, get, when it gets struck by those stones, if the tree had a mouth and a tongue, would have yelled and would have screamed from pain. And would have said to those who, were, who, struck, who struck that tree, enough hurting me. But you see, it is only those who are fruitful get attacked, not the fruitless. It is only those who do good things get attacked by their own family and close colleagues. When you are faithful at work, your own colleagues go against you. When you are faithful at home, your own family go against you. When you are faithful in the church, the, your own church can go against you. Because they see the fruit of Christ in you, they become jealous and envy of that. They will attack you. What you need to do, don't ever be angry or hold any grudges against those who are against you. Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. You see, it takes God to open one's eyes. It takes God. So what you need to do, pray to God to open their eyes to see what you see, to perceive what you perceive, to realize what you are realizing by the grace of God. And this God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Son was revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years ago. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God revealed in the flesh. So when you are persecuted, when you are cast with a stone, don't be angry. Don't be upset. Now what I'm about to say, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying or put it in a different perspective. There is not one perfect church. If you are looking for the perfect church, you will never find it. Don't get me wrong. If you are searching for the perfect church, you will never find this perfect church. Why? Because the church is resembled by the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven, in it there is good good fruits and there is bad fruits in every church which is resembled by the kingdom of heaven in that kingdom of heaven there is good fruits and there is bad fruits now what is the church according to saint paul we are the church we are the church and christ is the body maybe you put the volume slightly down slightly down we are the church, Thank you. we are the church and Christ is the body. In the kingdom of heaven, which is the church, you'll see good Christians and you'll see 
Not so good Christians. You'll see fruitful Christians and you'll see fruitless Christians. This is why, my beloved, what is the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God? In the kingdom of heaven, the Lord Jesus gave parables. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like ten virgins, five wise and five unwise. My question to all of us, is there unwise people in the kingdom of God? Of course not. But is there unwise in the kingdom of heaven? Yes, because there are Christians who chose Christ from the heart and became wise through Christ. And those Christians who chose Christ through lip service and became ignorant unwise so in the christian world there are wise and unwise but in the kingdom of god you can't have ignorant people there all those who make it to god's kingdom they have to be wise otherwise there is no room for you there and i could go on and on in this So the kingdom of heaven are the Christians. The Christians are the body of Christ, the church. Christianity is the largest in number worldwide. Christianity comes first. I'm not sure what the percentage now or the number is, but it's around anywhere between 2.5 to 3 billion Christians worldwide. But the Lord Jesus, even though it comes number one in volume, but the Lord Jesus says to, the, says to Christendom, to the Christian world, He says, do not be afraid, O little flock. For your, for your heavenly father has chosen to give you his kingdom. Do not be afraid, O little flock. Even though we are the largest in number worldwide, but the Lord Jesus comes and addresses the Christian world by saying, do not be afraid, O little flock. Because the Lord loves the little, not the great. The Lord does not look at quantity. He looks at quality. It is not the number that matters to the Lord. It is the heart that matters to the Lord. What is the point of having the church filled with people, but their heart is not for the Lord Jesus? What does it benefit the Lord? Nothing. The Lord wants your heart. The Lord, he'd rather have 10 people in the church wholeheartedly for him than 10,000 and their heart is as cold as Chicago's winter or Antarctica. So the Lord is looking for your heart. And the Lord says, no matter how big you grow, I want you to remain little. I want you to remain small. Don't ever boast about your success. Don't ever be pride about your achievement. Remember, without me, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are nothing. So the higher I take you, the lower you humble yourself. Do not be afraid, O oh little flock. This little flock, Lord Jesus, is the biggest in number worldwide. He says, I don't care about the number. I care about the heart. I care about the heart because the Lord says my way my way is na narrow is the gate and difficult is the way narrow is the gate and difficult is the way and few people find it but this way leads to eternal life but the world it is a wide gate and so wide is the way and so many people find it but that way leads to absolute destruction that's why you see majority follow the world minority follow christ because there is a prize tag here to give in order to be a disciple of the lord jesus christianity is not a story i read a book i read it is not a song I sing. 
Christianity is the person of Christ whom I need to live. I need to live this person. I need to embrace this person. I need to breathe this person. I need to know this person. When am I going to know him? Just because I fulfilled my duty and I went on Sunday to church, you think now you've known Christ? No. Christ is life. I ask myself, is life only on Sunday morning or evening? No. Life is every moment. So Christ is every moment of life. He is that every moment. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you are while asleep, when you go out, when you come in, when you get up, when you sit down, when you are quiet, when you talk, Christ has to be in it every single moment. Every single moment. If you search for the perfect church, Satan will laugh at you. You know, some churches become too fanatic and say, we are the only way to Christ. <laughs> oh, Habibi. No tabule for you. If you search for the perfect church, Satan will laugh at you. What will happen for the person who is in search for the perfect church? They will be going from one church to the other, to the other, to the other, and they will go in circle searching for the perfect church. You know where they will end up? They will end up at home. No more church. No more. If you jump from one to the other, from one to the other, you lose track of the Lord. You need to find the one that is nourishing you and the Lord will tell you because the Lord never lies. The Lord shows the way he is the light of the world. When the Lord touches your heart, when the Lord fills you up, when you come, remain in that church. Stop jumping from one to the other. You'll end up without a church at the end. But rather, instead of looking for the perfect church, go into that church and look for the perfect one who is the head of the church. Look for Christ. Look for Christ. When you see a servant, when you find a servant all for Christ, <laughs> maybe you should stop and listen. But if that servant is giving Christ 20% and 80% about worldly achievements, we've got a problem here. Oh, we've, we've built 100 churches now and... Um, and we have investments everywhere and we've got schools and we've got this and we've got that what is this is this what christ died for christ died for you my dear friend not to build him a hundred churches and a hundred schools and have hundred million or billion dollars in the bank account you are after the wrong christ you are preaching the wrong christ some of these preachers are called prosperity preachers. Prosperity preachers are, are mainly found in America. Prosperity preachers, they will make Christianity so easy. Like the path is paved with sapphire and precious stones. It is so easy. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants you. Just love him and do whatever you want. No, the Lord said, narrow is the door, is the gate, and difficult is the way. Few people find it. 
narrow is the gate and difficult is the way my way is not paved with sapphire and precious stones my way in fact it is laid with thorns because unless you carry my cross you don't find the true christ you don't so enough of this lie They live in a hundred million men, hundred million dollar mansions. And they come and lie to people about the Lord. They will be barbecued in the next life. Shish kebab. With hot pepper. Enter the church and search for the perfect one who is in that church, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the first circle, the Christian circle, where you are being persecuted by your own Christian family. The fruitless attacking the fruitful. And you see that everywhere, don't you? You see that everywhere. Why are you going against me? Aren't we all Christians? No. The second circle, which is the external one, this is the internal one, the Christian circle, internal. The, the, the second circle, the external one, it is the world circle. The world circle. The world circle, we find it in verse 11. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the outer circle, the world circle. The world will attack you, will persecute you, will revile you the moment you come and preach about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the world will hate you. The world will hate you. Sorry. What's wrong? Is it on? No, it's not. Okay. The world will hate you the moment you speak about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <sighs> However, remember this. You are not the first one that is being persecuted. There were prophets before you who were persecuted and church fathers before you who were persecuted. You're not the first one. So don't take it too much and to heart, you know. Relax, take it easy. You are not the saint of all saints. Other people were persecuted before you. You are no special. So don't think of yourself, you're someone too much, too big, too precious, too special. You're not. Many other people were persecuted before you. Is there something wrong with the aircon? Isn't it hot? You see, the enemy doesn't like it, eh? Now, the outer circle is the world. Now, what is our situation on earth as Christians? Today, today's topic is you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. This is your graduation day. You see, when we first came, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. All those other blessings, the nine, all those nine blessings that we went through, and we remained faithful to the Lord Jesus throughout those nine blessings by being persecuted by our own Christians and by the world, and we still remain faithful, graduation comes. What is your graduation? The Lord will make you salt of the earth and light of the world if you go through the nine beatitudes 
and remain faithful to the Lord Jesus. He will make you the salt of the earth and the light of the world. This is your graduation day. Congratulations. You are now a doctor in theology. Receive your certificate. What is my certificate? Christ made me salt of the earth and light of the world. Not university. Not my PhD in theology. Don't be boastful about your certificate, my dear church leader, or whoever you are. So what, you're a theologian. Have you graduated from the University of Christ or not? Don't tell me you went to Oxford and Notre Dame and whatever university. With all love and respect. But those unis don't give you Jesus Christ. Don't. Sometimes they will lead you to Satan. You need to graduate from the school of Christ. You need to be taught by the master, the teacher. None but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In order to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Now, are you ready? Good. What is our condition on earth? As Christians the Lord gave us two examples one earthly the other heavenly verse 13 which is our topic today you are the salt of the earth this is an earthly example you are the salt of the earth the true Christian the true believer of Jesus Christ resembles salt in six points the true Christian resembles salt in six points number one salt comes out of the water the believer comes out of the holy baptism water and spirit unless one is born of water and the spirit cannot enter the kingdom of God Nicodemus so the salt comes out of the water the true faithful believer comes out of the holy baptism. Salt is snatched out of the water and the believer is snatched out of the baptismal font. Out of the water. Salt comes out of the water white. And the believer comes out of the baptismal water dressed up in white. And the dress should be white, not beige. It's got to be white. Yes. <laughs> no other color. <laughs> so next time you want to get one of those gowns, make sure they're white. So the salt comes out of the water white and the believer comes out of the baptismal font white, dressed up in white, i.e. a new creation. A new creation. The salt gives taste to the tasteless and the true believer gives taste to the tasteless people you see when other people encounter have an encounter with you they say I've never felt this way before I've never experienced this before I've never heard anyone talk this eloquently and beautifully and so touching than you before I feel different I feel revived revitalized I feel afresh because I tasted Christ in you, through you. I am now different. The tasteless now has taste through the believer. Salt is very cheap. And the true believer of Christ is very cheap in the eyes of the world. The greatest born of a woman, John the Baptist, was beheaded for one dance. For the sake of one dance, John the Baptist, the greatest born of the woman, was beheaded. You see, the true faithfuls of Jesus Christ are extremely cheap in the eyes of the world. He was beheaded with one dance. Man, is this your price, John the Baptist? He says, that's how the world perceive me a true Christian is a nobody to the world 
they always the the world always put that Christian down and they say oh he is a judgmental person he discriminates a lot he is uh, he thinks he's someone special but he's nothing well who said that I'm special all I'm saying is Jesus Christ is the special one I'm nothing but I'm giving you the one who is everything what's your problem but you see the world looks for the mighty ones they don't look for the weak ones they look for the mighty ones but the mighty ones are evildoers the weak ones are the ones who do the will of God but you see those who do the will of God in the eyes of the world are nothing are weak ignorant they must be dumb up here what do you mean you go to church every Sunday what do you mean you pray what do you mean you fast this is news to me isn't that sick you only live once have fun enjoy life go out do whatever try everything it's a free country if anybody tells you this is wrong or this is right none of their business you do as you please so clubbing here we come star city casino here we come king's cross here we come the, the white powder here we come somewhere in a room in a novotel overlooking the darling harbor here we come and the sabufa khabibi in the back seat going wah, wah, dov, dov. here we come brother what fasting i'm not a nun i'm not a monk I want to live. I want to have fun. I want to dance with somebody. Oh, what a crazy world. What a crazy world. Honestly, it's a sick world. Um, if the world had accepted the Lord Jesus, the world would have accepted those who follow the Lord Jesus. So do not be dismayed and shocked. Why is the world going against me? Because the world went against your master, your Lord, your savior, your redeemer. And if the world hated the Lord, guess what? They will hate you because you are following in his footprints. So what is so shocking about this? Nothing. So enjoy it and smack the world in Jesus mighty name and say to the world, be gone, Satan. And in our secular terminology get lost don't worry about the world the world will always hate you who cares focus on the Lord Jesus do not be disheartened do not be troubled Christians hate me the world hates me so what I'm here for my sweetheart. Habib Albi, Yesu al Messiah, Jesus Christ, Isos Christos. I'm here for my Jesus, not for the Christians, not for the world. I'm here for the Lord. I'm here for the Lord. Focus on the Lord. People will always either love you or hate you. It's okay. Don't don't be a big balloon when people love you and don't be a flat tire when people despise you remain you steady don't go up don't go down don't be a mountain neither a valley be a straight line see John the Baptist when they came those priests and Pharisees to to question him they said who are you he said with no hesitation, I am the voice crying out in the wilderness. I am the voice because the one who comes after me is the logos, is the word. I am the voice to the word. And this voice is saying to everyone, warning everyone, the mountains will be lowered, the valleys will be filled and raised up. Why? Because the one who comes after me, who is before me, the Logos, his path is straight even. If you wish to meet him, if you wish to be touched by him, 
to be changed by him, to have an encounter with him. If you are a mountain, i.e. living in false pride, come down from your high horses and sit on the ground. And if you are living in a valley, losing hope, saying it's too late, nothing will fix my situation, come out of that valley of losing hope, raise yourself up and stand even. For the one who is coming, his path is straight. If you stand straight, neither boastful nor losing hope, you will meet Jesus and he will say, what can I do for you? You'll cry and say, Lord, I want to see. Wow. And he will say, your faith has healed you. See, my child. Then you'll see him. Then you'll see him. See, my child. The salt, number five, preserves, preserves things from corruptibility. There is meat, you put salt in it, preserves that meat from corruptibility. The faithful preserves the people of that town or that city or that country. I'll give you an example. The Lord God was going to burn Sodom and Gomorrah. L-G-B-T-Q-R-S-T-U-V-Y-W-X-Y-Z. So the Lord God was going to burn Sodom and Gomorrah. Same sex. Yeah? And maybe in between now. Oh, it's even worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. What are you, a male? No. Are you a female? No. I'm in between. I'm none of the above. I'm an it. When the Lord God was going to burn Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, I'm, how can I do such a thing and, and without speaking to my friend Abraham? So he went to Abraham. He said, Abraham, I'm about to burn Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin has reached my heaven. They're living in filth. Abraham said, Lord, if you are merciful enough, if there is 50 families in that, in that city, please be patient. Don't burn it. He said, if I find 50 families, I will tolerate and I will be more patient. I won't burn it. But he said, I can't find 50. He said, what about 40? I can't. 30, 20, 10, 1, the house of Lut. His nephew, Abraham's nephew. He said, because of Lut, the Lord God said, I will be patient because there is one faithful in the entire rotted city. Wow. So God delayed his plan in a way to burning Sodom and Gomorrah because there was one faithful. God is patient with the world because there are faithfuls still living in the world. So don't ever say, why is God not doing anything? He's not doing anything because he has his own still in the world. That's why he is patient with the world. But the day he takes his own, he will decimate the world. Will you burn a house when your own child is in that house? Of course not. Then how much more our heavenly father will not hurt his own children that are still remaining in the world. That's why God is patient. So the secret societies, don't you think, don't ever think you're getting away with it. No, because there are good Christians. That's why Jesus Christ of Nazareth is being patient with you. Otherwise, who do you think you are a piece and a minute piece of dust? Who do you think you are that you can call yourself gods? You are a nothing. Wake up to yourself before Jesus comes with full steam ahead. Then you'll realize you're nothing. But that realization will be too late. Will be too late. See, today, even Christians are tolerating everyone in the name of love. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. A church leader comes out and says, we need to love everyone. What? Listen, church leader, 
you need to love everyone, yes, but you cannot tolerate every evil act of everyone. Because when you tolerate that evil act, you are in denial of your Messiah. How dare you? How dare you speaking in the, tis, in the tongue of deception? Because that deceptive tongue belongs to Satan. Be careful, my dear friend. Be careful. In the name of love, embrace everyone. Well done. There is no more room for discipline. There is no more room for teaching. There is no more room for punishing. There is no more. Might as well just go out naked and do whatever you want to do. So where is your Christ? What are you going to say when the Lord Jesus sent his disciples to the entire world and he said, go, disciple them, baptize them and teach them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What you are going to say to this verse, Matthew, Matthew 28, 19, even though I'm old, but I still remember Matthew 28, 19, my dear church leader, what are you going to say to this? What are you going to say to this? Embrace everyone? How can you embrace everyone? But the Lord is patient because He has still good Christians on earth. That's why He's patient with the world. Once those good Christians are gone, no more world. The Lord will wipe it. He cannot tolerate evilness being done in His sight. He cannot tolerate it. Number six, salt once it loses its flavor becomes like a rock when salt becomes corrupt becomes like a rock now what does that say a christian person the moment they start searching for their own soul for their own selves they'll become like a rock when you as a christian start searching for your own personal benefits you'll become a rock when you say i'm doing this I'm saying this, I'm building this. It's all about me, me, me. This me is the rock. Salt has gone bad. And when the salt goes bad, it cannot dissolve anymore. The salt is good for nothing anymore. The moment the salt is corrupt, they throw it in the bin. You can't do anything with it anymore. And if you put it in the food, doesn't dissolve anymore, becomes like a rock. That's when the salt has gone bad, lost the flavor. The moment a baptized soul, a Christian soul purchased by the blood of the Lamb of God, the moment that soul goes in search of its own self, becomes bad, bad salt, rocky, good for nothing, gets thrown out and trampled underfoot. Now, why do we need to dissolve? See, the graduation from the school of Christ is you need to be the salt of the earth and you need to be the light of the world. Now, the salt, when you put it in the food, what happens to it? It dissolves, yes? You can't see the salt anymore. But what do you do? You taste the salt in the food. When you eat that food, you say, oh, this food is so tasty. What gave it taste? The salt that is no longer vivid, is no longer seen, but it has perished in that food, dissolved in that food, gave that taste. A true Christian is the one who allows other people to taste the Christ who dwells in him, not himself. You see, a successful church leader is the one who makes people love Christ, not love him. Yes, a successful church leader is the one who makes the flock loving Christ, not him. You see, there are some church leaders in the name of Christ. They make you love him. When you love him, he's gone. You're gone. All of you to go into hell because the one who saves the one who delivers, the one who gives life is this sweetheart. 
His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So when you go to the bishop, to this bishop, and you say, Bishop, we love you, add to this sentence and say, we love you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you're talking. Don't say we love you. I'm no good for my own self. I can't be good for you. It is the good God who dwells in me and you is the one who makes the entire difference. Love the Lord and through the Lord, love the church leader. Not outside the Lord. So if the church leader teaches you something wrong, don't listen. Don't say, oh, but they know what they're doing. No, sorry. Church leader, come here. You just taught me something against the Lord. Get out of my sight. I don't want you. You are not leading me to green pastures and still waters. Then you are my enemy. You're my enemy. You were placed in the church to lead me to Christ, not to you. Not to your pocket, not to your throne, not to your own glory, but to the glory of Christ. This is the dilemma of the church. There are some church leaders, not all, some church leaders are leading the flock to themselves, not to the Lord Jesus. They have become that foul salt, that bad salt that became a rock, good for nothing. It needs to be cast out and trampled underfoot. Now, why do we need as salts? You are the salt of the earth. Why do we need to dissolve? Because when I dissolve, then Christ is seen, not me anymore. When I dissolve, then you see Christ, no longer me. I should hide behind the Lord Jesus, not before him. I'll give you this example from the Holy Bible. What I mean. When you read in the gospel according to St. John chapter 11, where the Lord Jesus goes to the tomb of Lazarus to raise him from the dead. Now, Lazarus was already dead four days. That means he's rotted. Everything in him is dead. Every organ, the blood, everything is dead. Clinically, medically speaking, impossible to be resurrected. What is impossible to man is possible to God. So he goes to the tomb. Look at the Lord. He says to the 12 disciples, he says, move the rock from the face of the tomb. They move the rock. And then he says to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus is wrapped from head to toe with, with uh, cloth, cloths. He, he gets up after four days being dead, fully wrapped, sealed. He walks fully wrapped. He walks out. The Lord says to the disciples, go and loosen his head cover. See, when you tie someone's head, usually the knot is made from the back. Yes, you tie it from the back. So to untie it, what you need to do, you need to go behind that person and untie that knot in order for that cloth to fall off their face, their eyes. So the disciples went behind Lazarus to untie the knots. Why? Because the Lord says, when the cloth falls off his eyes, Lazarus must see me first, not you. Because if Lazarus sees Peter, Simon, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, if he sees you, he is dead like you. But he needs to see the living God in order to be alive. So next time, Simon, Philip, and Andrew, when you raise the dead, you better stand behind the dead for the dead to see Jesus Christ, not you. Church leader, you better let people see Christ, not you. You are a salt and the salts must do one thing, dissolve and say along with St. Paul, I live, but not I, but Christ who lives in me. I need the people to come and see Jesus, not this old piece of wreck called Bishop Murray. You need to see the Lord. You need to see the Lord. This is why my beloved, 
in order we need to dissolve ourselves in order for Christ to be seen in us and this will lead us to the next graduation you are the light of the world if I don't dissolve and Christ appears in me I cannot be the light of the world because the light of the world is Christ is not me but when I dissolve when I disappear when I hide myself and bring Jesus at the front then the world will see the light of the world for Christ is the light not me but for the light of Christ to be seen by people through me I need to be the salt that dissolves in order for Christ to be seen through me are you with me this is the way all of us need to be mom and dad at home if mom and dad you do not give Jesus Christ to your children you will have no control over your children period because the one who controls everyone and everything is the Lord Jesus not you mom not you dad so what is your role your role is to give Christ to your children thus you need to dissolve in order for Christ to be the head of the household and how are you gonna dissolve you teach your children son daddy is talking to you now I want you to know one thing son this house I couldn't have done it without the Lord Jesus this food I wouldn't have been able to put on the table without the Lord Jesus your mom I wouldn't have married her if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus and this beautiful family I wouldn't have ever had if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus son remember this without the Lord dad mom and all of us are nothing that's why I thank the Lord every single moment for this family because he gave it to me it wasn't me when you teach your child this you've won him forever you've won him forever you've won him for ever and parents since I'm mentioning parents do you know what your inheritance in the next life is one thing your children in the next life you cannot say to the Lord Jesus I brought with me a million dollars you cannot say to the Lord I built ten houses you cannot say to the Lord Jesus I have got a mansion I have I drive a Ferrari a Lamborghini a Mercedes-Benz a BMW the Lord Jesus says this is all material I want to see what have you brought as an inheritance into my kingdom you will say when you're faithful you'll say Lord I came with my family now this is your inheritance mom and dad when your children are saved and sound and are in the presence of the Almighty God in the kingdom of God that's your inheritance yes so what are you doing with your children what are you doing with your lives what are you doing with everything God gave you are you gambling with it be careful you may lose it or are you thankful for it thanking God always always my beloved now when I dissolve then I can be the light of the world because Christ now is revealed not me to the world now the Lord gave us two examples one earthly from below and one heavenly from above salt of the earth from below and light of the world from above why are we the light of the world because the moment the Lord Jesus left this world the light left the world the, the world remained in darkness but now Christ is dwelling in us therefore he's saying when I was on earth in the flesh I am the light of the world but this light of the world went up to heaven and sat at the right hand of the father but now I dwell in those who are true children of mine when I dwell in them they dissolve like that salt and let me shine forth once again through them in this dark world I shine through Jesus now I'm shining through my children who are on earth the Christian world but the faithful ones not the fruitless ones but the fruitful ones Jesus now is shining once again to the world through those who are true Christians 
true followers of him on earth. The Lord says, a little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. As long as I'm with you, you're in the light. But when the light goes, darkness will overtake you. And who is darkness? Satan. If Christ is the light of the world, then who is the darkness of the world? Satan. This is why the world lives in darkness because the world is placed in the bosom of Satan, who is darkness. Satan controls over darkness. Every time we do something wrong, we enter darkness. Satan is in control. We need to come back and repent. Say, Lord, I'm sorry, I've sinned. I've made a mistake. I stole, I killed, I swore. I did this and I did that. Sorry, Lord, I want to come back to the light again. I entered darkness through my foolishness, through my ignorance, through my weaknesses. But Lord, I'm coming back repenting. Bring me back to the light, to your light, Lord Jesus, to your light. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. How did God illuminate the night? He illuminated the night with the moon and the stars. How did the moon and the stars become illuminative when the sun reflected its light on them? So when the sun shines on the moon and the stars, they become illuminative. It is not them who have the light. It is the light of the world who is shining on them. And this is the way it goes with the Christians. When we allow Jesus Christ to shine on us, we will be like the moon and the stars shining in this dark world. Who are the saints? Stars. The Lord Jesus said to his disciples, it is not good for you if I remain with you. I need to go in order for you to progress. <laughs> Why? Because the Lord was literally saying, you are the stars, I am the sun, S-U-N, the sun, the light of the world. As long as the sun is walking, do you see the stars? When the sun shines, do you see stars? No, who cares about the stars? What, did the stars go somewhere? No, but the light of the sun overshadowed everything. He said, as long as I'm walking in the midst of you, the whole world will be focused on me. Who gives one penny about Simon, Andrew and Philip? But when I go and hide and my light shines on you, you will be enlightened by this light. The star will be shining in the heaven of this dark world. The world will look at you and say, wow, what a beautiful star. What a beautiful saint. What a beautiful Christian. What a beautiful child of God. Don't be boastful about that because what gave you the beauty is the light of the world, not you. Without Christ, we are dead, dark objects. If it wasn't for the sun, we wouldn't have seen the moon nor the stars. But the heaven is beautified by these stars which receive their light from the one and only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are the light of the world. Verse 14. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Which city is set on a hill? The city is the church. The city of God is the church. This church that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. This city is the church itself. And this church needs to be the light of the world because the one who dwells in it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the true light of the world. So when the church truly reflects the Lord Jesus, the church becomes the light of the world. When the church truly reflects the Lord Jesus, it becomes the light of the world. Why is it set on a hill, on a mountain? Because this church is supposed to be heavenly. You see, when you look at a mountain, what do you see? You see heaven after mountain. 
and the mountain normally is elevated meaning the Lord is saying my church is heavenly my church is elevated my church should not be ever worldly chasing money chasing fame chasing positions chasing power chasing authority chasing leadership and dictatorship this is not the church of Christ the church of Christ is heavenly there is no competition in heaven nobody steps over nobody's toe nobody chases no one else's throne brothers don't fight brothers don't excommunicate each other in heaven they're all brothers in Christ they love each other perfectly everyone in heaven gives their throne to the next one not take it away <laughs> here they fight over the throne my throne is greater than yours you need to follow me why should I follow you, you follow me and they start fighting <laughs> and then they say this is the true church of Christ When the church dissolves like that salt, the light of the world shines through that church to the rest of the world. See, in verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. When the church lives Christ, when the church lives Christ, it becomes verse 15. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand that it gives light to all who are in the house. When the church lifts Christ, it becomes verse 15. What? Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. What does a basket mean here? Trade, buying and selling. games we begin going to church to gain something and if I don't get that something I won't go to church anymore because I put that light who is Christ under the basket basket means I put things in it so I went to church because I wanted to marry Rachel I went to church praying to the Lord to give me Rachel he gave me Queen Elizabeth poor Queen Elizabeth so when he gave me Elizabeth I stopped going to church I went to church because I wanted my business to flourish I went to church because I was sick and I wanted to be healed I went to church because I wanted to pass my exam the moment we're healed we forget about the church the moment we pass the exam, I'm not praying anymore. Prior to that, I was praying every day. I had a court case. I was praying every day on my knees just to pass this turmoil. The moment I was set free from the court to King's Cross. When I became sick, oh, Ya Mar Sherbel, Ya Saint Nectarios, Ya, oh, I brought all the saints in heaven on earth. I brought them all down. I went to every church. I licked the dust from the front door of the church. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed for healing. The Lord had mercy on me and he sent one of his children to heal me through his grace. And the, and the saint came and healed me by the grace of the Lord. I got up on my feet. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Time out now. I can breathe again. Before I used to gossip about everyone. When illness hit, I said, everyone is a saint. I'm the only sinner. Lord, have mercy on me. The moment I got healed, I started gossiping again. Why are we going to church to gain what? You cannot... Put that lantern, that lampstand under the basket. 
you cannot trade in the house of the Lord. You cannot trade. You cannot go to that priest, to that bishop and say, I'll pay you this much, just give me a divorce paper. Because they will say to you, we hold the key to the kingdom. Must be a very big car, this kingdom, to drive it. You hold the key to the kingdom, you buy and sell. The church started sitting with high caliber figures. The church forgot about the homeless people. The church forgot about those who are afflicted. Who cannot do anything hopeless we went to the powerful and we stepped on the weak but when the church lives Christ you cannot light nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house when the church lives Christ the moment you enter the church you are in the light you will see the Lord Jesus you will see the Lord Jesus. There's no more buying and selling. We talk five minutes about the Holy Gospel, 50 minutes about business. We have investments everywhere. We have projects everywhere. We need to build this and we need to do this. Who told you? You became too preoccupied with buildings and you forgot to build people for God. That's why when the so-called pandemic came, everybody saluted it. Because Christianity became weak. The day Christianity became that hard salt that went corrupt couldn't dissolve anymore so the world saw the church leader the world did not see Christ if the world had seen Christ they wouldn't have dared they wouldn't have dared because the world is in the bosom of Satan Satan's head is crushed under the foot of Jesus Christ so when Satan sees Christ in me he can't dare to come anywhere near me but if he sees me, oh yeah, he will swallow me before I blink my eyes. This is Christianity. The reason why the Christian world is weak, because they have sold their Messiah. And they became a corrupt salt. They became a rock. No more able to be dissolvent. So they were seen before the eyes of the world, not Christ, who is supposed to be seen always. Always. The moment I lose track of the Lord Jesus, Satan has devoured me. And this goes to everyone and for everyone, every Christian, whether you are a clergyman or not. The moment we lose track of the Lord Jesus, Satan will devour us. No matter how wise, how strong, how healthy, how wealthy we are, Satan is much more powerful when we are outside of the Lord. Only way we can overcome Satan and step on him is when Christ is the light of the world in me, in you, and in everyone. And love the Lord. Love the Lord Jesus. Don't go to the wrong places for the wrong reasons. Stop hurting the Lord Jesus. Once in your life, make the Lord happy and step on Satan. Once in your life, go to the Lord Jesus and say, I'm sorry, Lord, I've sinned against you and heaven. Accept me. I beg you, bring me back to your light. I've walked more than enough in darkness. I cannot stand it anymore, Lord Jesus. I want to come back wholeheartedly. I will not act anymore. I will not falsify the truth anymore. I will not pretend anymore. I'm coming fully aware of my sins and I am confessing them 
straight to your sacred heart, Lord Jesus, begging you for mercy. You are the only way, the only truth, and the only life, the only savior, the only redeemer, the only true living God revealed in the flesh. I need you, Lord. Without you, I'm dead. Dead. Please, Lord, live in me and shine through me. Allow me to be the salt that will dissolve in order for Christ to be seen for this dark world. Shine, Lord, wherever you go. Make me that vessel that carries this light of the world to this dark world. Make me that vessel, Lord. Don't ever come to the church for the sake of gaining something. Whether it be health, wealth, or whatever. Come to the church for the sake of gaining Christ. And Christ cannot be traded with. You can't buy and sell Christ. He is God. You're playing with fire and fire will burn you. You come to Christ to gain him. And the only way you will gain Christ is when these eyes start shedding tears of remorse. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I have sinned against you, Lord. I've done everything evil in your sight, Lord. I'm begging you, have mercy on this piece of wreck. Bishop Murray. Thank you, Lord, for being you. Thank you, Lord. The never-changing God. The ever-faithful God. The ever-loyal God. Thank you for you, Lord Jesus. I don't want nothing from you. I just want you. With you in hell, anytime, anytime, Lord. I don't care about the place. I care about the owner of the place. Take me as you please, wherever you wish, as long as you don't lose track of me, Lord. Don't let me veer off because I'm weak. You are the good shepherd. I'm your sheep. I don't have sense of direction. I need the shepherd to guide my footsteps. So Lord, wherever you wish to go and take me, please do. As long as you keep me with you. And please pardon my ignorance, my weakness, my blindness. Pardon my mistakes. Pardon them, Lord. Keep me with you, even if I'm a piece of wreck. Have mercy on me, Lord. Just don't let go of me. I'll come wherever you want. As long as I'm with you, Daddy. As long as I'm with you, Daddy. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify not you, your Father in heaven. So when they see the light in you, the world, the people who are living in darkness, when they see the light, they will run to the light. So when they come to this light that is shining through you, who is Christ Jesus, don't ever expect them to glorify you. But the best thing you could ever do for yourself as a favor, let them glorify your heavenly father. When they glorify your father who art in heaven, then you are a true servant of the Lord Jesus. You have fulfilled your duty faithfully and loyally to your master. Blessed are you for your reward in the end will be God himself. But you see, in order to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, I have to go through nine Beatitudes. I'll call them out again. The first thing I need to be, poor. Don't come to the Lord and say, I'm rich. 
Don't come to the Lord and say, I can do it. Come to the Lord empty, poor, empty. Let the Lord fill you. Don't fill yourself by yourself. If you come with a full glass, the Lord will say, I can't help you. There is no room for me to fill you with. Come empty. Let the Lord fill this glass for you. When you come empty, meaning confessing your sins, say, Lord, I'm nothing but a sinner. I'm nothing but a blind man. I'm nothing but a weak instrument. I am good for nothing, Lord. I came for you to fix me. Without you, I am zero. And when the Lord takes this zero and puts it next to him, we, I become 10 out of 10 because he is the only one and I, am the, I need to be the only zero. And when the zero is placed next to the one, I am 10 out of 10, perfect. The nothing becomes everything and the one who is everything. Don't ever be one. You'll be the twin tower. You'll be brought down to the ground. September 11. Don't be the one next to the one. You cannot compete with the Lord. Be nothing and let the one who is everything make you everything in him. I am poor in spirit. I need to confess Then I need to mourn on every time I broke the Lord's heart. And then I need to be meek, meaning trusting the Lord that I need to hunger and thirst for good deeds, righteousness. Then I need to be merciful on those who are against me like the way I was against the Lord, yet he was always merciful toward me. And then I need to be pure in heart in order to see God and understand what he wants from me. I need to know how Jesus functions. I need to realize his voice in the midst of a million zillion voices. Satan can come and imitate. But when I know the Lord, I'll say to Satan, be gone, Satan, in Jesus' mighty name. This is a fake voice. I recognize the voice of my good shepherd. So no one can come and lie to the bishop. Na, 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 na. Some people will come and say, Bishop, we love you, we love you, we love you. Okay. Thank you, Habib. I know they don't. Some people are quiet. I know they love me. And I'm not saying to those who are saying to me, I love you. I'm not saying to you guys, <laughs> no, please, don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, no, not you, not you, not you. Anyway, it's about the Lord. Oh. Get to know Jesus Christ. Make time. When I was a deacon, I was deposed from the church as a deacon. I don't know if you know what a deacon is. That's where you start with the rank. Deacon, then you go to a priest, then a bishop, then a cardinal, then the highest rank. So I'm two more ranks away from the highest rank. <laughs> Not bad. Just kidding. Um, when I was a deacon, I was deposed from the church. I remained at home for almost six years, five and a half years. Five and a half years of absolute... I don't know. Hell. Five and a half years. Rejected, unwanted. Didn't go to my own church for five and a half years. If the Lord is kind enough and lets me go back to those five and a half years, I'll choose him without blinking my eyes twice. I'll take those five and a half years all day long. I don't want this. I want to go back. The reason why I'm saying this, don't ever whinge and complain about a situation maybe God has placed you in it. Thank him for it. 
because you don't know what is good for you it is only God that knows what is good for you the situation may be difficult the situation may be troublesome the situation may be very exhaustive but let God manage your life don't do it your way let him do it his way in you you see at the time I could not last I was in pain I begged the Lord please I want to go back to the church why did this happen to me why was I deposed what have I done what have I done what have I done but now I've realized the best time of my entire life this till this moment were those five and a half years I would never never swap them for nothing because there and then I didn't see people I saw the Lord so no one can tell me Jesus doesn't exist no one no one that's why now nothing matters to me whether I go back or not whether I have a position or not I don't care with love and respect I don't care you know why because this sweetheart is all I care about because he made sure that I have learned this lesson no one ever loves me more than him thank you Habib Albi, thank you. I love you, Jesus. My sweetheart. Who cares about the throne? Who cares about this cloth? Who cares about position? Search for the Lord. Search for Christ. I've been asking him to take me. Yeah. I think he gave me a glimpse. <laughs> he said, if you keep on asking, I will take you. But you know what? There is no one, no one and nothing gets anywhere, anywhere, anywhere near what this beauty of all beauties is all about. Nothing. Just love the Lord and trust the Lord. Mm. I love you too, Dan. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. They see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven, not you, your Father. Now, this is what it's all about. Unless our Father in heaven is glorified, we failed. We failed. Go to church for the sake of Christ. Don't pray and say, Lord, I want to pass the exam. Say, Lord, let your will be done in this exam. Whatever you want. I'll do my best. I'll leave the rest to you. If I fail, I thank you. If I pass, I thank you. If I, if I get married, I thank you. If I remain single, I thank you. If I am rich, I thank you. If I'm poor, I thank you. If I'm healthy or sick, I thank you, Lord. In all ways, I thank you. In all situations, I thank you. Just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. The Lord is good. And the Lord is good. Oh my goodness, the Lord is good. Thank you very much. I spoke a lot. When you are pure in heart, you'll see God. When you're a peacemaker, you'll be persecuted by the Christians and you'll be hated by the world. When you're a peacemaker, your own Christians will go against you and the world will hate you. Are you going to stand firm? Or are you going to give up on the Lord? When you go through a dark tunnel, are you going to say, that's it, Lord, enough is enough, no more? Or are you going to be strong and say, Lord, I'm struggling, but you're with me. I'm weak, but you're with me. I'm about to collapse, but you're with me. No matter what happens, Lord, I am in safe hands. The doctor said you have three weeks to live. Who cares? 
My husband wants to leave me. Who cares? I have to care. <laughs> My wife went to her parents. Hallelujah. <laughs> About time. First time ever I'm free. She suffocated me for 400 years like the Israelites in, in Egypt. Moses came and set me free from my wife. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Uh, you know what? This argument happened between the husband and the wife, right? So the husband lost it. He must have been Middle Eastern. Like they, their blood boils up very quickly, you know, Middle Eastern. So anyway, he, he lost it and he told his wife off. And then she went to her room crying, crying. And then after five minutes, that anger and that volcano sort of uh, eased, eased down. And then he realized he shouldn't have done that. He felt very bad. So he came to the room to see what his wife is doing to apologize. And he saw her packing um, her clothes into the luggages. And he stood there and he said, Honey, I'm really sorry. I don't know what got into me. I, I just lost it. I went blind. I am so sorry for all the nasty words I said to you, for everything bad I said to you. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And then he looked at her and said, And what are you doing, honey? Um, she said, No, nothing. I'm just um, gathering the winter clothes because summer is coming. <laughs> she was going to her parents. But you see, when you are angry and then you come back and you apologize and you say nice words, everything is beautiful. Now the Lord is this beauty. He's the water that puts that fire off. We need the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I spoke alone. Yeah, we need to go through all the persecutions for the Lord's sake in order to be the salt and be a taste in someone's life. We make a difference in someone's life. To be able to do that, we need to go through this curriculum. We need to graduate from the school of Christ. It doesn't come that easy. It doesn't come that easy, my beloveds. The Lord is good. Jacqueline, let's hear another beautiful uh, hymn with your beautiful voice. Oh, 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 oh,
announcements and then uh, we'll let you go back to your homes and the, and the love of Christ let me see okay oh we are going uh, to America Arizona um, God willing on Friday next Friday the which is uh, is it the December 1st 1st of December next Friday yes so next Friday we'll be in Arizona for a Bible preach session uh, please do come to church, okay? It doesn't matter who stands here. It's uh, as long as the word of the Lord is being preached. That's the only important thing. So please do pray for us um, for this trip to be the reason uh, for the glory of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for his holy name to be glorified throughout the world and through his beloved children. So next Friday, the 1st of December, or the American way, December the 1st, uh, it'll be at 6 p.m. sharp. Location is Chateau Lux event venue, address 1175 East Lone Cactus Drive, Phoenix, Arizona. So Chateau Lux event venue, 1175 East Lone Cactus Drive, Phoenix, Arizona. It will be on Friday, December the 1st at 6 p.m. sharp. I pray um, the Lord... Is going to bless this trip and uh, for his holy name to be glorified in uh, all of his children and I'm looking forward to uh, meeting our beloved people in Arizona and by the sound of it there will be other people coming from other states I've been told there are people thinking of coming from Canada flying out to Arizona from Canada and uh, flying from other states within America as well so please pray for me I don't know I hope it's not just too much for me, um, but looks like it's already a very, very, very busy schedule and a very tight one. It's a very short trip and looks like I am fully booked every single day to meet people there um, already. So if there is other people that wish to come and see me, I don't think I'll have the time. I haven't, be, I haven't gone yet, but it looks like it's already every single day that I'm in Arizona, there is um, something happening. So... Um, yeah, we thank the Lord. Honestly, I don't know what's happening, but anyway. <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? Okay, good. Personally, I don't want to see myself as a bishop. I, c I don't get me wrong. I am very blessed for the Lord to give me a rank that I'm definitely not worthy of. But I just don't want to see myself as a bishop because I don't like formalities. Maybe this is the way the Lord made me. I don't know. So I like to joke. I like to say, g'day. Give me a high five, brother. 
Um, and sometimes people come and say, like in Arabic, they say, do we call you Sayyidna? Or do we call you your grace? Or whatever. I say, Man, forget about these titles. Say, so I love the word dad. Now that's number one. If you don't want to call me dad, father, call me friend. Cuz, how you going? <laughs> you know, give me a high five, lay me some skin, brother. And uh, let's get down, bro, and have a nice chocolate sundae. McDonald's have to pay me. I've been promoting them for too long. Don't eat McDonald's. No good for you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I thank the Lord. You know, I always see, I, I just want to see myself like as a little kid playing um, with other kids. Beautiful. I don't like these formalities, you know. And the moment there is a big long table and food and everybody's sitting formally and there is a knife and the fork, uh, I want to use my five fingers, you know. Mm. Mm. And then wipe everything with this. Mm. Habib Albi, yeah. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. So, I don't know. Honestly, I, when I look back and I see that little kid that used to play with other kids in the street, I say, what have you done, Lord? <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> I don't know this guy at all. He's totally, he's totally a, a total stranger to me, this person. Um, I want to run to that little kid, you know, because um, I see always that innocence in there and simplicity in there. So um, if you want to come and talk to me, you know, you don't have to worry about, call me father or dad, though I love that, or call me friend and give me a high five. But please pray for me because I don't know what's happening. Yep. I don't know what's happening, the Lord knows. May his holy name be always glorified. I pray he always keeps me his donkey. I don't want to go any higher than a donkey. I pray for that. Um, so yeah, Friday, December 1st, or um, yes, it'll be at 6 p.m. And Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, beautiful. It's a 14-hour flight to LAX and then an hour and a half from LAX to Arizona. Uh, I'll be watching cartoon. <laughs> Madagascar. Let's move it, move it, move it. I like it a lot. <laughs> I would like to be a professional whistler. <laughs> All right. Have you seen that uh, cartoon movie, uh, Madagascar? It's beautiful. It's cute. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes... Sometimes when I'm in the plane, I'm watching cartoons, I get embarrassed. I look around, if anybody's watching, they say, look at this guy, Ninja Turtle, sitting with all this outfit and watching cartoons. Whoa, what is this? <laughs> I say, leave me alone. I'm a, I'm a little kid, leave me alone. <laughs> oh, Donald Duck, uh, that's a good one. All right, um, youth ministry. We have our monthly meeting. Um, uh, actually, tomorrow is our monthly youth ministry meeting at uh, 12 midday, 12 p.m. It is tomorrow, Saturday, at 12 midday here at the church. If you haven't enrolled in the youth ministry, you could always come on the day tomorrow and enroll. It is for those who are 18 plus. This is our youth ministry. Um, it is 18 years of age plus. If you'd like to join our youth ministry, please do so by coming tomorrow at 12 midday here at the church. Carols by Candlelight will be on Saturday the 9th of December. It's on Saturday the 9th of December. We'll start from 4 p.m. till 6 p.m. It'll be open for the families and the children. The kids can play, families can sit, eat, drink, whatever. It's a family gathering in the love of Christ. It'll open from 4 p.m. till 6. 6.30 p.m. parents and uh, the adults will come into the church for our beloved choirs to sing. Uh, carols, um, uh, hymns in three languages, English, Arabic, and Assyrian. Uh, the kids will be looked after while parents are sitting in the church. So we look forward to seeing you for Christmas carols Saturday the 9th of December, 4 p.m., and then the hymns starting at 6.30 p.m. sharp. Um, the um, sponsorship of the children and the families abroad it's going absolutely magnificent we have just over 800 people registered 
and the sponsorship of a child or a family overseas. Um, about 26 countries uh, worldwide, there are these, these sponsors are from 26 different countries. The latest one, uh, I believe it was Holland and Poland. Holland and Poland. Uh, there, there is from the Middle East, there is from Asia, there is from America, Canada, and Europe. Uh, there are about 26 countries, over 800 people are sponsoring either a child or a family overseas. If you'd like to sponsor a child, this is the flyer. Please see one of the committee members for further information. And uh, for those who are watching us at home, please share this flyer with the people you know, and let's put a huge smile on the Lord's face by helping a child or a family somewhere in this world who are truly, truly suffering and struggling. And now, if I could ask everyone to stand for the finale prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, the peace of Christ be with you. See you next time. Please pray for us for this trip to Arizona. Be a successful one. God bless. Lord, I'm standing here before you. Knowing you are in control Resting in your heavenly glory Let your will be done for me I cast my burdens on to you Trusting in your blood you shed for me I know you've copied all my sins I'm standing here in victory Knowing you have done it all Your desire in all the glory Let us praise your holy name God, you never let me go Through my darkest days, you're with me Yeah, you have always been my strength I cast my burdens on to you, Lord And knowing you Trusting in your blood you shed for me I know you've covered all my sins I'm standing here in victory Knowing you have done it all Your desire in all the glory Let us praise your holy name
Oh, oh.